It was an Al-Khalil that, uh, Al-Khalil, by the way, was named Hebron by the Israeli government. Okay. So it was an Al-Khalil that I felt the contrast of the most well-meaning intents and expressions of the human spirit against a very menacing and destructive presence. The vibration of a destructive presence in Al-Khalil was like a hush that might immediately be broken by gunshots or stones at any moment. It was the calm that exists the moment before a tornado, tornado touches down. You felt that calm? You've been in a tornado area? There's a calm that exists right before that tornado comes down. That's when all the animals and insects know something destructive is about to happen. So everything gets hushed. That's the feeling in al Khalil. That calm, that, that quiet is there. Uh, it's a quiet kind of fear, tension. The something is the presence of a threatening Israeli military, mostly boys in their teens, with huge machine guns and rifles, clad in military clothes, and a group of Israeli settlers, they're all armed with guns, who reside in high apartments overlooking the center of town. The military, about 3,000 in number, were there reportedly to protect the 400 or so settlers in al Khalil. Israeli settlers, I refer to. As I walked in Al Khalil, I really feared for my life because the troops eyed us carefully, obviously saw one group, our group, as being questionable, questionable visitors. Me, an African man clad in African attire, in the company of Palestinians, and a member of the Christian Peacemaker team. That's a team whose mission is to protect the human rights of peoples. One word came to mind as I walked through the occupied section of the town. Eerie. It was eerie. Like I said, that feeling of something dangerous in the air, lurking. A tension, a quiet pall pervaded everything. As we walked to the mosque, I felt nervous, carefully peeking around me as teenage boys who were Israeli troops were playing frightening G.I. Joe attack games with their rifles and machine guns, fingers on the tri trigger, running, aiming, laughing, spitting on the ground. This is what was happening. In other words, you had this group of teenage boys who were in the military, basically, running around with machine guns, running around from corner to corner, aiming, shooting at each other, aiming like they're shooting at each other. Okay? Very frightening. And this was happening every day. I could sense, almost hear a boy's voice saying, oops, sorry dude, I didn't mean to pull the trigger, uh, but just stay right there, somebody will come help you soon. Um, sort of like the South African police might say to an African man in the days of apartheid. Or sort of like the police in Alabama might say to an African, man, Amer African American man in the days of the marches. Or sort of like the LA police might apologize to Rodney King. A man's life could be snuffed business would just go on as usual. 